Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth lesson in our Chance to Shine Live series. This week we turn our focus once again to our fielding skills and we introduce you to Ferocious Fielder. Our coaching team of Joe and Rehan are with us once again. Say hi guys. And they are ready Hello. to strike down their targets with fearful force. We've been inspired by the amazing fielding, teamwork and skills on the show from both the England and India sides in this week's test match. And hopefully you've had a chance to catch some of that action on Channel 4. We say a big hello to this week's Yorkshire Tea School of the Week, who are Hayes Lane Primary from Timpley in Cheshire. Give us a big wave, guys. All set and ready to go. We also give a big shout out to their cricket coach, Chance to Shine coach Toby Mullins from Cheshire Cricket who's been inspiring them to enjoy the game too. Also, a big thank you to our long-time supporters and friends at Yorkshire Tea, who provided bumper supplies of tea for our current and future schools of the week. If you're watching on our YouTube channel, let us know what school you're from in the chat bar, and we'll give as many of you as possible shout-outs during the lesson. So, into the lesson, as we said, it's Ferocious Fielder. We've got two learning objectives today. Number one is to develop our throwing accuracy towards a set target. And number two is to identify a new rule to help change the challenge of the activity. Once again, we've got three activities for you. Number one is star skills. Number two is called comb raiders. And number three is called paper smash. Plus, at the end, we've got a takeaway star challenge for you to work on. and We'll explain more about that later. In terms of equipment, you're going to need some safe space. So ideally somewhere where you can increase or decrease your distance towards your throwing target. You'll need a wall or a surface to rebound up. Obviously, you can work with partners as well to help that. This week, something a little bit different. You need five pieces of paper and something to stick them to the wall. So you'll see each of us have got our targets up on our wall. We use blue tack to to do that, but remember to ask your teachers or parents about how you can stick that to the wall. Also, some small targets to place on the floor as well. So it can be a tea towel, some socks, gloves. I've got some cones as well that you can see down here. So a couple of different colored cones and we'll explain more when we do the Cone Raiders activity. These activities can all be completed as an individual, but we encourage you to work with a partner if you can at home or someone within your class bubble. Remember to go at your own pace. If you need to take a break at any point, please do. And always have a drink to hand if you need to grab a drink. Right. We're going to get ready to throw. We're going to do our starter activity called Star Skills. Mm -hmm. Rehan, over to you. Cheers. Thank you, Ian. Hello, everyone. So as Ian mentioned, we're going to be uh, doing ferocious fielder. So we're talking about fielding today. Right. So fielding obviously is very important in cricket. Right, so we've got catching, we've got throwing, we've also got the physical side of it as well, so running and moving around, right? So in order for us to start moving around, we need to get warmed up first. So what I want us to do for the first two minutes is simply just get warmed up, just move around in the space that you have and just throw the ball and catch it. If you, if you can do it with a partner, great. If you're on your own, it doesn't matter. Just move around, catching the ball and do that. So you've got two minutes to warm up, right? Off you go. So we're going to do some early shout outs. We've got loads of schools on board already. So hello to Darley Dale, Preston Primary, Bridge Junior, Poplar Cat Class at St. Peter's, King's Home, Ling Bob, Sharpness. Welcome back, guys. I think you've been with us every week so far. So Northgate, St. Peter's, Newham, Castletown, Robin Hood as well. Welcome back. Lovely to see Hayes Lane. Lots of moving around, lots of different types of throws and catches as well. Remember, you can yeah, challenge brilliant. yourself, guys. Think of new yeah. ways to throw the ball. Absolutely. Yeah. I like the cone setup they've got on the floor as well. There, that's brilliant. Yeah, managing that space really well there, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Put, I'm really I'm looking much. to get both of my arms warm here, so doing some left-handed and some right-handed throws. Yeah. A good tip that year. 
needed a bit of practice since I haven't done anything since last week, so I'm starting catching the football. Nice big target, <laughs> easy to catch. Yeah. Two hands. But yeah, good stuff. Get right, not in. long to go. Keep going, everybody. Remember, we're trying to get warm, so keep active, keep moving around. We've got Truro score with us again, Dorchester middle, Burley Woodhead, welcome guys. I think I could see some clap catching going on there with Hayes Lane as well. Like that, oh, remember right. those ones from our cool capture session. Yeah, brilliant, well remembered. Right, last couple of seconds. Um, brilliant, that's two minutes so Right. Perfect. So hopefully we're warm now. So we've also, as we were warming up, we've also managed to have a think about the different ways that we can catch and throw the ball. So if you, if you were listening, Ian talked about throwing it um, using both hands. So getting both hands warm, both arms warm as well. And if you, if you noticed, even if you looked at Hayes Lane, some of them were doing underarm throws and some were doing overarm throws. Right. OK, so for the next part of the session, what we're going to think about is the different ways in which we can throw the ball and catch the ball, right? So as I mentioned, obviously we've got underarm throw and we've also got overarm throw, right? So just be, remember when we're throwing the ball, especially if we're in a small space, just being careful that we're not throwing it too hard at the person next to us or even if you're in a small space, just be, just be mindful that you don't cause any damage at home. A good piece of advice would be using a soft tennis ball or even a pair of socks, right? So if you've got that at home and you've not got a tennis ball, you can just use that and, you know, hopefully we won't do any damage with anything like that. Right, okay. So what I want to think about now is you're creating a bit of a personal best, right? So with throwing the ball, what I want us to think about is if we're doing it with a partner, I want you to throw the ball and see if you can catch it. Try throwing it underarm and then try throwing it overarm, right? So if you're doing it on your own, what I would suggest is maybe using a wall that's closest to you. So if you can see, I've got a wall here to my side and I've got a wall just above me as well. So if I want to throw underarm, throw the ball and catch it. If I want to throw overarm, throw the ball and catch it. Right, so I'm not trying to throw it too hard. I'm just trying to make it comfortable for me to catch. So what I want you to do is to try and see within the next two minutes how many times you can throw the ball either to your partner or against the wall and catch it, right? In two minutes, see how many catches you can get either in a pair or on your own, right? So you've got two minutes, off you go. Blitz, I absolutely love that, using the two walls, a nice little yeah. underarm throw and then a big overarm throw. Yeah, Getting a bit it. of variety. Great, that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dropped it. So any tips from you, Joel, what we could do? Oh, do you know what? I think using a pair of socks, you've got to be on your toes. So what I'm finding is with the overarm throw, having to go towards it. So following my throw. So pull yeah. it through. So I'm ready to take that catch back. Right. So I can also use my ceiling as well to throw the ball off. It's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, think about challenging yourself as well. You know, throw it one hand, catch it with the other. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Right, so we've got a few more shout outs. So the boys at Winterbourne School, we've got Merton School and Miss Knowles back again. Previous school of the week, hello guys. St. Thomas's, we've got Hollybrook Junior, Cook and Rise and Glenfall. Welcome on board, everyone. Lovely to see so many people getting involved. We've yeah, got St. Christopher Primary on. School as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The last burst of energy before the holidays. Come on, guys. Yeah. So, Rehan, you've, you've mentioned overarm yeah. and underarm throws. When would you choose to use an overarm throw and when would you choose to use an underarm throw? That's a really good question, Ian. So, with overarm throw, what I suggest is when we've got a, uh, a long distance between yourself and the target, I suggest using an overarm throw. So hopefully we'll get the ball to the target faster. It might be throwing it to another player, but it might be throwing it to an actual target to the wicket. An Brilliant. underarm throw, yeah, an underarm throw I'd suggest if we're closer towards our target, doing an underarm throw. 
Brilliant. So it's a lovely tactic there, Rian. Thank you. Yeah, been right. Okay, that's two minutes up though. Wow, that went by really quickly. Right. So hopefully we've managed to do some catching, some throwing, some underarm, and some overarm throwing as well. So just remember, obviously, if you're doing it at home, just be careful. Just be mindful of the space that you have around you. Right. And obviously, if you've not got a, a tennis ball or any other ball, try and use a softball. Even you know, even a football or a pair of socks, as as Joe uh, used as well. Right. So hopefully we've managed to do a lot of throwing and catching with our partners or even if we did it on our own. So for this last part of this uh, particular session, we're going to create a bit of a challenge, right? So in this challenge, there are seven levels, right? So I want us to do is to see if we can complete seven levels. So if you look, level one is underarm throw and catch. So if you're doing it with a partner, throwing your underarm to your partner and catching, and then your partner has to throw it back to you. If you're on your own, obviously, underarm throw and just catch. Throw it up in the air and catch it. Or you can do it off the wall. Right. The second level is underarm throw, three claps and catch. So underarm throw, three claps and catch. Right. The third level is Overarm throw. So I'm just going to use the wall on top of me. Overarm throw. One bounce, catch the ball. And catch the ball. Right? So that's level four. Right? Now level, sorry, that's level three. Now level four is overarm throw. No bounce and catch. So the overarm throw, you're going straight to your partner or the wall and you have to catch it before it bounces. Level five is overarm throw. This is a bit tricky now, getting more difficult. Overarm throw with one hand, catching it with the other, right? So overarm throw with one hand and catching it with the other. Quite difficult, quite challenging, right? So level number six, what I want you to do is find a target. So because I'm at home, I've got a water bottle, right? So I'm going to place it on the floor there. And what I'm looking to do is with the overarm throw, trying to hit my target. So overarm throw, oh no, I've missed, right? I didn't get that. We'll just keep trying, trying to get that, right? So that's level six. Now level seven, I want you to create your own level. So I want you to think about it, get creative, whatever you want, see what you have around you, what space you have, what equipment you have, and try and create your own level, right? Now, if you really want to challenge yourself, if you, if you get through the levels quickly, and if you manage to, let's say, drop the ball, go back and start again from the beginning, and let's see if you can get through all the levels completed without dropping the ball, right? So you've got two minutes, try and working with a partner. If not, working on your own. Let's see how many levels we can get, right? Two minutes, off you go. Seven's my lucky number, Rehan. I've got this, I'm ready. Go on and joke. <laughs> they were throwing it with one hand and catching with the opposite. It's quite difficult. It is actually. Yeah. It's got to be really quick as well. Yeah. I'll tell you what, the one bounce off the wall with a sock is very difficult. You've got to stay low to the ground for that one. Yeah. Some really good catching going from on from there with Hazley. Some really good stuff there. So remember, guys, it doesn't matter how far you get, but it's about challenging yourself. And if you are yeah. working with a partner on this one, yeah. if they've only got to level two and they're trying really hard to get to level three, and you you advanced yourself, think about some feedback that you can give your partner to help them. So what did you do well that you can help them with? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Just dropped it on level five. I'm having to do it again. Oh. Come on, guys. Oh. Starting all over again, Joe. You, you go, yeah. if, you, if there's a failing, you have to go back to the start. That's yeah. it. I'm ready. I'm ready to try again. Yeah. Like that. I mean, one, one tip for the clap <coughs> catching would be throw the ball a little bit higher. So we mentioned that. Oh, that's a, a good idea. Ago. Yeah. One, two, three. Catch the ball. Yeah. 
Love it. So we've got a few more shout outs. So we've got Shaman's Cross, who's been with us before. Welcome back. We've got all the juniors in Blackburn. So hello, Mr. Hussein in the class there. We've got Yakima right. Primary. We've got Sherwood Primary as well. Welcome back, guys. I know you've joined us before on Chance to Shine Live. Lovely yeah. to see Hayes Lane all challenging themselves as well. Loads of different levels going on there. Yeah, Doesn't matter brilliant. where you get to, as long as you're working up your personal best. Yeah, that's it. And that's time. Right, again, two minutes just flew by, absolutely. Right, so well done, everyone. That's really brilliant. So hopefully we've managed to do some throwing and do some catching. And I, I, I hope we're all really warm now as well. So as you mentioned, don't worry if you didn't manage to get to the level six or seven. You know, it's about doing what you can and just trying your best. So keep practicing. So every week we talk about keep practicing. That's how we get better. Right, so just think about your throwing and stuff and trying to make it comfortable as well for yourself. Right, so I'm just going to pass you back to Ian now, who's going to go through some more fielding stuff with you. Right, thank you, Ian. Lovely, thank you, Ian. So, some brilliant star skills shown there by everyone, and you've had a good opportunity to think about lots of different types of throw. We're going to dig into a little bit more detail now. We're going to have a game called Cone Raiders shortly, but before we do, we're just going to talk about a few little things that can help us. There's some keys to success for our overarm throw. Now, the activities that we are doing here, you can use underarm. Of course you can. But we'd like to see if you can challenge yourself to try out those overarm throws. So, number one, first key to success is about using your non-throwing arm to point towards the target. Okay, so I'm going to show a quick example of that. So, for me, I'm going to practice, I'm going to practice throwing my left arm here. I've got my targets on the wall. My non-throwing arm will be my right arm. So I've got my socks in my left hand ready to throw using my non-throwing arm. Now, how you do that is up to you. Some people might have their hand that way, that way. In between, you might point with your elbow. As long as you've got something pointing towards that target, it's going to help you with your direction. Okay, so as an example here, ready, set to go. And use that point towards and it'll help you hit your target. So that's key to success number one. Key to success number two is to create a strong and stable side-on position towards that target. So in our previous striking lessons and our catching lessons, we talked about having a nice, stable, strong base. Exactly the same here. Okay? So got my hips, my shoulders, side-on to that target, so my wall. I'm getting a nice, powerful position here, ready to throw. So the important thing for me is my feet here. So I've got one foot pointing towards this foot here, my front foot, that is pointing straight at my target. Okay, so we put those two things together, we've got a really strong position to throw from. Okay, so try and apply those where you can during the activity. So we're going to have a go. We're going to have three rounds of cone raiders. It's going to be slightly different each time, but for this first round, I've got my four cones set up on the floor, and I've decided I'm going to throw from this distance. So very simple. My aim is using that overarm throw, you know, right hand, left hand, underarm, whatever you want to do, but try overarm if you can. I'm going to try and knock those targets out. Every time I hit a cone, what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove it, take it to the side, and I'm going to see if I can hit all of my targets. If you can do that inside two minutes, set them up again and see how many times you can knock them down again. Up to you, okay? Think about how you might make the challenge harder as well if you find it easy. But it's all about exploring those different keys to success. So you've got two minutes to practice. First activity, away you go. I thought I'll just I'll just get a load of water bottles and use it as, as targets like a bowling game. <laughs> Hope you're not knocking the water out of those bottles, Ray. And he's splashing all <laughs> over the living room there. No, 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 no. I didn't think about it, but no. <laughs> Rianne, you and I thought like I've raided the recycling, so I've got my yogurt pots. <laughs> right. <okay. laughs> Remember with this one, guys, if you are working with a partner, you can give feedback again. And think about those keys to success. Use those to focus your feedback. It'll be really helpful. Hey. Nice, Rianne. Good stuff. All right. Trying to get the bottle. Oh, hey, look at this. 
Hey, so we've oh, got East at those Coca Primary. Mrs. Ashford is saying hello to her Jupiter class. Congratulations, Ollie Guy got to level seven. Well done, Hadira Patel level five. Oh, Lauren oh, Carmen good. level level seven. Really challenging wow. ourselves. Lovely to see. And Greville Primary School, welcome on board. If you've got a level seven, could we ask them to put in the comment section what their rule was? That'd be great to hear their different rules that people came up with. Yeah, it'd be yeah, brilliant, absolutely. wouldn't it? Seeing how creative people are doing with their different types of challenge. Exactly, yeah, sharing those ideas. Yeah. God, these two minutes are going so fast. Keep going, babe. Yeah, I like it. So, Joe, in terms of the keys to success, which one are you really focusing on for yours? For me, I'm definitely thinking that front arm. So, because my targets are a bit lower, my front arm's really having to think about going a bit further down. So, brilliant. Front I like that, and stuff. I can see that angle pointing down. So, I'm sure that will look a bit different later when you're throwing up the wall. Exactly. Brilliant stuff. So once again, that's flown by. Two minutes has gone very quickly now. Um, so we're going to move that on. We're going to have another round. Now, what we're going to show you for this round is our pair setup. OK, I haven't got a partner, but I am going to be playing against someone, and that's going to be myself. So I'm going to compete against myself. So one round I'm going to go right on, the other I'm going to go left and see how I get on. So for Cone Raiders in pairs, you've got two options. First option is you can claim the cones off your partner. So if you hit your partner's cones, claim them back, put them on your pile. So you get more on your pile, they have less on theirs. That's option number one. Option number two is a little bit like what we just did. So if you hit a cone, just remove that to the side. So that target area becomes smaller, yours stays the same. Up to you which one you want to use and discuss with your partner. So in terms of the setup, what we might have, so my partner's cones over here. So imagine I've got an imaginary partner behind the wall. And I will place my ones in front of me here. My aim is to hit those ones here. They're the orange ones. And if I had a partner working with me, they would be looking to hit the white cones. And in two minutes, we want to see how you get on. See who can claim the most cones or who can hit the most targets if you're working with a partner. If, like me, you haven't got a partner to work with, Challenge yourself against yourself. So have 30 seconds with your right arm, see how you get on, then have 30 seconds with your left. Or think creatively about how you can do it. Okay? So a bit of competition either with yourself, with your partner. But remember, if you are working with a partner, help them out too. What can you do to help them increase their score? And what can they do to help you increase as well? So think about that feedback you can give. Okay, a little bit of competition time. Round two, over to you guys. Look at that, lovely to see. Hey, it's Lane, fantastic. We've got ferocious throwing going on over both sides of the room. Yeah, that's brilliant. Some good catching skills going on, so everyone challenging themselves over on catches, those stopping positions. Yeah, Great demo, really guys. Technique. Some really good technique there as well. All right, we've got Scantabout Primary School, we've got Breakfield Park School with us as well. I'm having too much fun watching Hayes Lane here. I'm not even getting to have a go. It's great. Look yeah, same. Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> so think about it as well, guys. If, so, in fact, Joe, I'll go to you on this one. If, if you're not able to hit your partner's target, what, what can you do to make it easier? Are there any other ways you can make it easier? We could work close together. So I've set my target up, so I've copied your idea of working against myself, so you can make it quite close, so the target's closer. Um, you could use a bigger target, perhaps. Um, for example, maybe even following through. Oh, just got it. So make a moving towards it. Love that, so a bit of extra technique to get more power. Rehan, to make it tough harder, if, you, if you're claiming loads of cones off your partner, how can you make it yeah. more of a challenge? So what we can do is you could probably make the, the target cone smaller, so maybe take some cones out and just have a small target. Or I think one thing that I like what you mentioned earlier, Ian, is if you're doing it with a partner, using your weaker hand. So for me, that would be my left. So using my left hand instead of my right and seeing if I can manage to get much success with my weaker hand. I think that few a couple of things that I'd say is make it more difficult. Brilliant, love that. So the one thing I like about that is it might help make it a really close competitive game because if it is, we're both challenging each other then. 
That's great yeah, advice. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that is the end of the two minutes. We're going to move on to round three now. So now we've familiarised ourselves with the game. We know how Cone Raiders is. We've had a chance to work with a partner or challenge yourself. I want you to think a little bit differently about this game. Now. So Joe's going to explore this a little bit later in her activities around some of the rules. But your challenge here is knowing the game already to choose one rule that you might add in or change to this activity. Now, if you're working with a partner, you might have to have a discussion to agree with them. Or if you want to really challenge yourself, you could each add a new rule in. So just for example, my rule that I'm going to add in, if I hit two cones in a row, so hit two targets and two throws, I have to take a big step back from that target to make it more challenging next time. So that's my new rule that I'm going to use. If I hit two in a row, I have to step back. Okay, over to you guys. If you need to have a brief moment to discuss, please do. But you're going to have two minutes to introduce and practice your new rule in the game. So round three of Cone Raiders, away you go. Uh, I'll tell you what my new rule would be, Ian. It would be down on one knee and trying to hit okay. the target. So going down on one knee. And then same thing, obviously, I'm um, pointing towards the target and throwing the ball. Okay, so that changes the height of it a little bit, allows you to focus yeah. on what your arms are doing there, Ray. Really. I like that. Yeah, so, so down on one knee and then throwing the ball. Yeah, with what new rule have you gone for? Oh, do you know what? I'm trying to think. There's so many. So I think when you've hit the two targets, it's just about taking them away and making that bit smaller, very similar to yours or even using different targets. So I've mixed my cones and my recycling so to make it harder. Maybe instead of hitting two cones, I only have to hit one yogurt pot to count the same. All right, so nice variety. You've got some smaller targets and some larger targets to hit. Exactly. Yeah. Brilliant. Love that joke. on Hayes Lane, some good fielding as well, good recovery. Oh. Look at that, there's, there's double fish pumping in the air going on there, I like that. Yeah. I like that as well. <laughs> there's a lot of clone, cone claiming back. Look, it's great to be competitive here, but it's about doing it in the right way, isn't it? It's about helping your partner, it's about making each other better as part of this. So we all love a bit of competition, absolutely. But if we can help each other improve as part of it, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we always right, talk about so another shout out time. Samford Hill Primary School are with us as well. Okay, so about 10 seconds left, keep going, keep practicing. And we're going to move on to our final activity. Brilliant stuff. So hopefully you've had a chance to put your own spin on Cone Raiders. Remember, if you really enjoyed that, Yes, we are going to move on to a new activity now, but you can practice that again. Okay, I love that one. It's a great competitive game if you can work with a partner on it. Right, we're going to move on to our final activity, a different type of target activity now. And Joe's going to take us through that. So, paper smash, over to you, Joe. Excellent. Hey, guys. Sorry, I was just quickly tidying up my area. So, hopefully, you can see my big numbers on my wall here. And to protect my paint, I've got lots of pairs of socks. So I'm going to be using socks for my drill to practice my paper smash. So this drill is all about improving your accuracy. So our learning objective was to make sure we can get as accurate as possible. Because when you're a ferocious fielder and the cricketers, the batters are running between the wickets as fast as they can, the quicker we can get that ball to the stumps, more chance we can get them out. So we're going to be as accurate as possible. Okay, what we're going to get to is you can use socks like I have, or you can use your tennis balls or whichever equipment you've got. It's absolutely fine. If you haven't got a wall or your parents aren't happy with you or if your school isn't happy with you aiming for the wall, you could also set up a target on the floor as well. So my ones on the outside and my four in the middle. So look at that central point or a small target, my yogurt pot in the middle and my four red cones. It's up to you. I'm going to be working with my posters paper smash on the wall. OK, guys, your first task, you're going to have two minutes just to see how many points you can get. Easy, it's self-explanatory. Ones mean one point. The four in the middle means you get four points. So if I hit that one, yes, I get one point, okay? If I hit the four, 
or just I get four. That makes me five points already. You're going to have two minutes to get as many points as you can. You can work with a partner, like I said, set it up on the floor. It's entirely up to you or that target on the wall. Guys, you've got two minutes to add as many points as you can. If I hit another one, oh, that takes me to six. Can you guys beat me? You've got two minutes. Go, go, go. Joe, you're going to have to challenge yourself, or you have to take a step back or increase that challenge. No. That was easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's beginner's luck, I can assure you. Beginner's <laughs> luck. I'm not hitting them now. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. So Hayes Lane, we can see it taking in turns. Remember, pass that on to your partner if you can. And you can practice your fielding skills when it rebounds from the wall as well. Remember, the quicker you can get that ball back, the more goes you can have, more, more chance you can have to score points. Remember they have that non-throwing arm as well. That's important yeah. for this one, isn't it, Joe? It is, exactly. That target, that point. So my paper smash is quite high up. So my arm is much higher up this time. Oof. I'm in for those points. Smash as I can. I've got lots of pairs of socks. It saves me fielding all of those balls all the time. Yes, another four. And you know what I really love about this? I don't know if anyone saw BBC Breakfast the other morning, but they did an interview with England women's captain, Heather Knight. And what was she doing to practice her fielding in a hotel room? She was using socks, throwing the ball against the wall. So just shows, doesn't it? This, this is a drill that is used by the very, very best in the game. Yeah. Exactly. If it's good enough for Heather Knight, it's definitely good enough for me. <laughs> A few seconds, guys. You've got this. Keep counting. It's a good maths as well. My goodness, I think I'm up. Ooh, 25. Phew. Go, guys. Well done. Excellent there, guys. Well, I'm quite warm as well, but hopefully you've got lots of points. Add them in the comments section. Let us know what your personal best was. We're going to move on to a different game, but I want to quickly revise or recap on Ian's keys to success. So, first key to success was using that non-throwing arm. So now my non-throwing arm is higher, but I also want to think about my elbow being at least equal or level with my shoulder or above. Okay, so my non-throwing arm's aiming towards my target, so I get more points for four, so I'm gonna aim for four. Okay, so my non-throwing arm's aiming for four. Okay? Second key to success, okay, was create that strong, stable base. So Ian even put the detail in saying my toe is pointing in that direction, but that strong, stable base, my hips and my shoulders in line, and I'm ready to throw at that target as hard as I can. Okay, so you're aiming for that four, even better. A little point I'd say is be really specific about what you're aiming for. So I'm aiming for that bit in the middle of the four, not just the whole number, but a really, really small target on it. So let's try a different game. You've got all your points, but now I want you to see if you can hit each target with as few throws as possible. So if you get all five targets in just five throws, you're the gold, you're the gold winner, you're the gold chapel, okay? However, okay, if you manage to get it in six throws or seven throws, you're doing really, really well. The important thing is you keep trying to get your personal best. So this game, if I aim for the four, for example, yes, okay? I can't hit that one again, that one's locked. Okay, next means I've got four ones to get. So I've used one throw, got one target. So I might again set my stable base, take my time this time. It's not so much of a rush, take my time, set my base, none through and on. Oh, just on the edge, two throws. Okay, we get the idea. Guys, see how many, okay, how few a throws it can get you to lock all those targets up. Okay, have another go if you can. And like Ian said before, if it's too easy, step back, make it a bit hard for you. Guys, you've got two minutes to see how many throws it takes you to lock all your targets. Go, go, go. Oh. Rihanna, have you got any ways you could make this more difficult for people who might be really keen? 
making it more difficult. Yeah, I mean, uh, we mentioned uh, just before as well about using your opposite weaker hand, and obviously that would probably make it yeah make it more challenging. And obviously, like you said as well, just taking a step back. But taking a step back and using your weaker hand would probably make it really challenging. So that's one of my things I would say to make it more difficult. That right hand, because you've really got to think about your technique when you use your weaker hand, haven't you? It's almost like learning again. So you've got to think yeah. about using that left hand and using it again. That's right. Ian, what would you do to make it easier? Any ideas? Um, we can definitely add some more bits of paper in. So obviously that would increase the size of the target and you've got more options to hit then. So we've kind of put it in like a dice formation. So the number five on the dice, but think about other kind of creations that you could put on the wall to make it a bigger target. I love that. You might even put a six on there to replicate the six boundaries, couldn't you? So something a bit more difficult. I like that. Yeah, so create more chance. So think almost like an archery board. So those outer yeah. targets could be less points right in the middle. You can have your 10 points bang in the middle. Or even small post-it notes or something. That's a great idea, isn't it? Using smaller pieces of paper. So brilliant from that Excellent. first one. So Ben Jones, Ben 65 scored in that first round of paper. Wow. That's a brilliant effort. Well done. Wow. Hey, I'm so Malik, 92. Nearly getting wow. to 100. See if you can get 100 next time, man. Can you beat that personal best? Yeah. Excellent. I wonder how the teams Nearly. are doing at Hayes Lane. They look like they're working really well as well. Loads. Loads of us. That's and a few look, seconds there's loads of different well. throwing styles going on, which is great. So we've got some that are really looking to extend that non-throwing arm towards the target, using that to aim. It's excellent. Well done, guys. That's so good. And so many people getting their personal bests and teams working together. So maybe as a team, it only had one throw each. You guys have to let us know how you got up. So really well done. OK, we're going to take it last time now. So our second learning objective was about creating your own rules, being inventive. Sometimes in a sports match or a cricket field, you've got to think on your feet. You might have to change your mind or get a different idea. So. I want you to go away in a minute and I want you to think of a new rule. So maybe use some of our ideas that Ian and Rehan shared with you before, if you can remember them. Or even better, come up with your own and let us know in the comments box. So my rule, okay, is I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try, and I'm gonna aim for each hit target, but then I'm gonna try and hit the gaps as well. So after I've hit a piece of paper, I've then gotta try and hit a gap between. Okay, so we're gonna try, hit paper, gap, paper, gap paper gap. That's going to be my game. It is up to you guys what you want to do. Be inventive. Like I said, maybe you've used Ian and Rehan's ideas from before. But we're going to have an idea about those two minutes. So go away, talk to your group, think about that learning objective. What rule can you create? So for example, my rule is going to be paper, then I've got to hit a gap. However, I could make it harder and say, if I miss my paper, I've got to go back to that pattern. So it's always got to be paper gap, paper gap. All right, Greg, while I'm practicing for 30 seconds, think about your rule. Talk about yourselves. Go, go, go. There's my paper. Oh, there's my cap. Question is, can I get my paper again? Ooh, just, right, guys, you've got two minutes. Go, go, go. We've got a few more scores that have come in here, guys. Congratulations, Jake Williams, 76. Fantastic effort on that one. Well done, Jake. Wow. See if you can get 80 next time. Can you get more than what you did first time round? So, Joe, My I've, really used, I've used your, your challenge as an opportunity to think about one of, for an English cricket fan, one of the most famous throws of all time. So Jason Roy's high pressure, pressure situation, his overarm throw in the World Cup final, threw it in Excellent. after one bounce to Josh Butler, the wicketkeeper. I mean, who can forget that moment? But my rule is it's got to bounce once before I hit my target. So I'm hitting the floor, seeing if I can hit the target after the bounce. Oh, that's a hard one. I like that. That's good. Yeah, it's a really good thing. I think thinking about those examples, like you said, if you've been watching on the TV or you've been watching highlights, the fielding is such a big part of our game. Mm. Going left-handed, it's definitely not easy. Rehan, yeah. have you got any game ideas we could do? 
Uh, I thought, well, we could rotate, maybe do one overarm throw and then one underarm throw. Oh, and then we, we and then we swap it around with the weaker hand, one overarm throw and then one underarm throw. That's good, because like that well. the ball won't always go where you want it to, will it? So sometimes you'll have exactly. to go from an overarm to an underarm. Good, last few yeah, seconds, absolutely. guys, doing really well. Yeah. Overarm. Then underarm. You have to change your body position as well, don't you? But remembering That's those right, keys yeah. to success. Side on, stable base, non through an arm, points at where we want. Excellent there, guys. Really, really well done. Well, we've got a few minutes left to pass you back to Ian, and he's got a bit of a takeaway challenge for you. Well done, guys. Really good. Brilliant stuff. Love that creativity, those different challenges. Hopefully, you guys have had a chance to discuss and create your new rules. And for us, when, when we're playing cricket, understanding the rules and being able to know how they can benefit us in terms of tactics is really important. So, as we said at the very start, we're going to leave you with a takeaway star challenge. This week's star challenge is called Stump Strike. And the aim of the challenge is to see how many times, how, how long it takes you, or how many throws you can take to hit stumps 10 times. So what we call a direct hit. Okay. We've got three levels of challenge. I'm just going to show you my set of stumps here. Okay. Obviously, you might not have a set of stumps at home. If you haven't, what we want you to do is to get creative and think of how you can make your own stumps. So you might need a base, but you'll certainly need three stumps. So an off stump, a middle stump, and a leg stump. Okay? So think about how you can create your stumps first. Our bronze level challenge is to try and get those 10 direct hits, but with three stumps. Okay? So you choose the distance, but make sure it's challenging enough. But you use three stumps for the bronze challenge. Silver, very simple progression from that. Take out one of the stumps. So you've got two to aim at. So 10 throws, 10 direct hits at two stumps. And our gold level challenge, take out that other stump there and see how many, how long it takes you to hit 10 direct hits on that. Now, if you, if you want to take it further, completely up to you. Think about how you can make it more difficult. Or even if you want to make that challenge easy, you might get a bigger target as well. But it's 10 direct hits. How long, how many throws or how much time does it take you to get those 10 direct hits? And direct hits are so important in cricket. We know that if you're able to do that, hit those stumps before your fielder has to use their hands to get the ball there, chances are you might get a run out more often. So really important skill to practice. Okay, so that's your takeaway challenge. Once again, obviously, well done to everyone for taking part in today and having your, a go and doing your best across all three activities. Now, an important message, we are going to be, like you guys, it's half-term week next week. Chance to Shine Live is going to be taking a week break as well. But we will be back on the 24th of February after half-term, and we're going to be working on our batting skills for our skillful scorer lesson. Remember, of course, you can keep practicing at home, in the back garden, at school, out on the playground, anywhere you've got safe space. You can watch this lesson back on our YouTube channel or via our chance to shine.org forward slash live page. And remember, another great opportunity to watch some cricket this coming weekend. So the second test match in the series between England and India starts bright and early Saturday morning. If you want to set that alarm clock early, please do. Or if you want to wait a little bit longer, you can get up, have some breakfast and then watch the rest of the afternoon and evening session. But some brilliant cricket bound to be on show on Channel 4. And of course, if you want to be in with a chance of being our Yorkshire Tea School of the Week, then remember to send in your tweets, your photos and videos if you're taking part. We have to say a massive thank you to everyone at Hayes Lane. Well done to the staff and all of the guys who took part. Give us a wave, guys. You've been brilliant today. Working hard in pairs, teams, challenging yourself with your overarm throwing. And Joe, Rianne, thank you once again for challenging us, giving us some creativity and showing us how to be ferocious fielders. So please join us again, not next week, the week after, with some more Chance to Shine Live. Take care and keep safe.